Okay, let's learn how to take a power to a power. So here in this particular problem, we have x to the fifth power, and we're trying to raise this or take this whole thing to the second power. So how do we do this in algebra? So in this particular problem, we have a 5 and a 2. So, uh, you know, most people will be like, okay, well, i got to do something with this 5 and 2. So what do I do with these 5 and 2? Do I maybe go 5 plus 2, 7? You know, that's one approach we could do with these numbers. You can also maybe multiply 2 times 5. You can maybe go, okay, that's x to the 10th. So there's two kind of ways that we can do this. You can also subtract, by the way, right? You can go uh, 5 or 2 minus 5, so that could be x to the third. And you could even, if you wanted to, you could take this 5 divided by 2. So we have all kinds of different options if we're looking to guess, right? So if this was a multiple choice question, and this was a, b, c, and d, uh, you know, a lot of you would be like, okay, which one? Hmm, which one is it? I'll choose this one, right? So... Uh, the whole idea behind this video is to get you to not guess, all right? We want to take away this face and get you to know with absolute certainty which is the correct answer because what we're dealing with here is extremely important in algebra, okay? You, know, you have to know how to deal with powers and exponents in algebra because they're just everywhere. And this is not difficult, but um, obviously if you don't know, you know what you're doing, well, then anything that you don't know what you're doing is difficult. So uh, we're going to clear up any confusion you may have on this topic, very, very important topic in algebra. And we're going to get to this in just a second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best math help programs there is. Uh, if you want to check out my math help program, you can uh, follow the link in the description of this video. Now, of course, I'll let you make your own determination of what you might think about my program. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have the big math courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, college algebra. Going to be launching my pre-calculus course here. Very excited about that. It's taken me years to uh, build these courses because when I teach, I really teach. I teach from to get my uh, students full comprehension and mastery. I don't do a little quick tutorial videos where you're like still having questions after you watch the lessons, okay? I really teach uh, complete comprehensive lessons. And I solve thousands of problems. So that's why it takes me a long time to develop my courses. But I have many specialty courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, nursing entrance, Accuplace, or Alex, there's so many different type of... of uh, exams out there that are critical for people and they're liked outside of a math course but these exams have a math component to it so I realized that and over the years I've constructed excellent test preparation uh, custom kind of curriculum uh, math courses so if you need to study for a particular exam check out my catalog I likely have the exam you're studying uh, studying for now I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers so I have a great homeschool learning system as well that's your category, and then obviously, if you're struggling in algebra, pre-algebra, algebra two, just need extra help outside the classroom, I can definitely help you out. But you need to first help yourself out, and that's why I always like to emphasize notes. Okay, so over decades of teaching mathematics, there's one thing that's apparent to me, and that's those students who take fantastic notes. Okay, almost always do great in uh, school. They always look like this person at the end of the year. They're like, look at me. Mom and Dad, I have a, uh, an A-plus in math, 100%. I'm awesome. Listen, anybody can do very, very well in math, but you got to pay the price. you got to work hard towards that. So those students that choose not to take notes, you know, they're checking out their phone, their social media. Listen, I get it. I was a student once myself. No one's perfect. But, you know, the d amount of distractions you have today is incredible. And the only way you're going to keep yourself focused is by taking notes, okay? Uh, I, I just can't stress this enough. You have to remain engaged. There's just too much information, too many little details. You look, let's take this, for example. If your teacher is teaching about how to take a power to a power and you just forgot that, then you're going to be guessing, all right? This is very, very uh, important. So there's so many little tiny details. So you have to remain engaged. you got to write this down. you got to review your notes. So if you haven't been doing well in note taking, and that's okay because a lot of students have, you know, you know, uh, need to improve, right? I'm not trying to hear, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to point out. Obviously, you're watching this video because you want to improve in math. I'm trying to tell you the secret 
and doing great in math is note taking. So um, really start working uh, hard on your notes, but you know, you still need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes uh, in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's answer this question. Which is the right answer? This is not difficult, but again, it's not about uh, it being difficult. It's about you comprehending and remembering. Okay, can we get this into your long-term retention? That's the whole thing. Like, I'm going to show you this, and you're like, oh, that's super easy. But if you forget this in an hour, then you know, it's not going to help you out. How do you retain information? you got to take notes. And you got to practice as well. Okay, so let's get to it. So what we're talking about is a particular property of powers and exponents, and this is one way it's described. A to the m power to the n power is equal to a to the m times n. Okay, so what we do is we distribute this outside uh, exponent to this exponent. So in this case, I'm going to multiply this 2 times this 5. So x to the 5th to the 2, let's just follow the rule, is equal to x to the 5th times the uh, times two just like this so it's going to be x to the tenth now we can kind of look at this x to the fifth squared right what does this mean x to the fifth squared well it means x to the fifth times x to the fifth that's what that means and what does that mean well this means there's five x's so here we have one two three four five that's x to the fifth right there and we're multiplying it by itself. One, two, three, four, five. So when we multiply all these x's together, it's how many x's? Well, of course, there's a total of 10. So that's x to the 10th power. So obviously, we don't want to be you know, doing these problems the long way. And imagine if I had this to the 20th power or to the 7th power. So we need these properties and rules. And again, they're not difficult, but... You know, this particular rule um, is part of a group of rules that deal with properties and, and, and exponents. So we have a to the m to the n, then you have products a to the n times a to the m is equal to a to the n plus m, and there's others as well. So check out my algebra playlist if you want to learn more about powers and exponents, and if you really, really want to master this stuff, uh, check out uh, one of my like algebra courses, uh, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, I have... I teach all this stuff thoroughly, but uh, now, if you feel like you you know know enough, you're like, okay, I get this. Let's have you practice this. Okay, so I got a couple quick examples here. So if you want to pause the video and give these guys a whirl, okay, just pause the video, see if we can do these real quick. Literally, if you've been paying attention, this might take you all of about 45 seconds. I'm obviously going to do these problems here in a second. So if you don't want to hear me give you the solution, pause the video. Okay, so uh, hopefully you, you got your answers, a little pop quiz, and let's get to it. So we have y cubed to the fourth power. Again, we're going to distribute this outside power to this inside power by uh, multiplication. So this is y to the twelfth power. So if you got that right, give yourself a check mark and a little happy face, maybe one star. Okay, we don't want to get overconfident here because we want to continue to practice. All right, so what about this next problem? We got g to the negative two power to the 10th. So does this rule you know, work with negative numbers? Yes, it works with fractions, it works with anything, okay? So this is gonna be uh, g to the negative two times 10. So that would be g to the negative 20th power. All right, so if you got that correct, give yourself a check mark. Now, how about this situation right here, okay? You're like, hmm. Well, we've only been dealing with one power. How does it work here? When some, you know, maybe you've been thinking that, well, maybe the same rule applies to both of these uh, powers. And in fact, it does, right? So there's another version of that rule, a to the m, a to the n, to like, let's say the c power is equal to the a to the mc to a to the nc. We just distribute, okay? So you probably were thinking, well, is it this x to the... 6 and y to the 10th. Yes, that is correct, right? So it doesn't make a difference how many powers are inside, okay? If you're raising that whole thing, of course, this has to be outside of parentheses, just like this. So um, that is the rule, all right? So if you're getting that down, excellent. All right, now how about this guy? What did you come up with this? 
we have uh, a squared plus b squared to the squared. So how many, let's be truthful, um, have this as your answer? Okay, so if that is your answer, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give you a little red check, you know, take off a couple points. And, you know, I don't want you to be too sad about this. You're like, I was doing so good. I was almost getting 100 percent. Listen, the the deal with this rule is it, it's the, it's only with factors. OK, only with multiplication, not with mm -hmm. sum or differences. So here you cannot do anything here. OK, so you can't distribute this. So the way you would deal with this particular problem, this is not the answer, is this is a squared plus b squared. So if you really wanted to, you know, make this into something, you would multiply these guys together like so. And you would use something like the FOIL technique or watch some of my videos on uh, how to multiply polynomials. OK, so again, the, you know, uh, as that saying goes, the devil's in the details. It's all these little tiny little things that, you know, make the difference between a face like this or a face like this, okay? You've got to pay attention. That's why you got to take notes. And this is only one tiny little, you know, rule of a topic within a chapter within a course, okay? Now, I mentioned fractions. Let me actually put one more problem here. How about this guy? Let's say x to the 2 thirds to the 1 fifth power, okay? What do you think about this? Well, you know, the pattern still continues. This is a number and this is a number. So fractions are numbers too. We got to like them just like the whole numbers and positive numbers. So we just multiply one fifth times two thirds. And hopefully you remember one fifth times two thirds is going to be two to the 15th. So that's X to the two to the 15th power. Okay. All right. Now there's other things here about what we call rational exponents. Again, uh, you know, we're dealing with powers and exponents, and there's all kinds of related topics here, right? So, but the thing about it is really just mastering one skill set at a time, right? And what the whole point of this particular video was to learn about how to take a power to a power. So as I told you, as I promised in the beginning of this video, you were going to walk away with a happy face, be like, okay, that wasn't so bad. And um, if you understand, well, then I did my job. But... You need to do your job, okay, and practice. Take notes, okay, keep reviewing because this is going to come up over and over again. If you get overconfident, you're like, I will, you know, I'll remember this. I'll remember this. Trust me, I'll remember this. Guess what? You're not going to remember this. And this is what you learned today is going to drop out of your, your memory and you're going to be like, hmm, oh yeah, what was that again? So it's only natural, okay? So learning math is a process. Uh, so, you know, you got to be committed to the process if you want to, you know, end up with one of these nice grades at the end of your course. All right. So uh, if this video helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way. That's always my goal is to explain things that anyone can kind of get. This stuff doesn't have to be scary. And uh, again, if you want my best resources, just check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.